news, breaking news, breaking news. John Diddy Combs is behind bars, someplace that they call Hell on Earth, which is the New York Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. I was there myself firsthand, so I know what he's going through. We're going to break this down. I'm going to get intricate so you understand what a daily life in MDC Brooklyn is for a man like Puffy that has, that's a mogul, and now he went from Star Island to, you know, Brooklyn's Rikers Island, all right? Sit back if you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and the like button is a must. It don't cost you nothing, all right? Uh, you know what it is. Unique Mech Audio, man. P. Diddy Combs is locked up in jail. We're going to play the news clip so you can see what's going on. Then I'm going to break it down so you understand, you know, what he's dealing with because he's a high-profile dude. He got a bag. So you better believe the inmates is going to be on him. The correction officer is going to be on him. They all going to be on him because everybody trying to get a bag wherever he goes. So look at that face. That's how he's going to be looking when the dude push up on him and say, yo, you know, son. You know, my, my, my wife rent got to be paid, man. You know what I mean? And, you know, you got the bag and, you know, you trying to stay here. So you got to pay to stay here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Welcome to hell on earth. This is prison. This is what I survived for 26 years in the federal prison. Let's play this joint now. All right. Diddy Combs has been denied bail in connection with the sexual abuse and sex trafficking charges he faces. And as Les Trump reports, the music mogul who once traveled by private jet to all those mansions is now in a jail that is notorious for its bad living conditions. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs spent his first night behind bars inside a facility that is being called hell on earth. The Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn is notorious for its appalling living conditions and rampant violence. How bad is it inside this federal lockup? There have been two murders, four suicides, and numerous stabbings and lockdowns in recent years. It's so out of control inside that four federal judges are reportedly refusing to send any more prisoners here. Ah, uh, you see that? You got four federal judges that's refusing to send any prisoners there, so that's telling you a lot right there. Now, let's ride a little bit. We're going to ride early. I remember when I was getting locked up during the, uh, the war on drugs, during the crack era. You had judges that was refusing to sentence men to the mandatory minimum because the mandatory minimum tied their hands where they had to give the sentence that the guidelines mandated, that it mandated. So that means you get caught with, you know, a, a 50 block of, of crack. You know what I mean? That's like a little block, half about the size of the top of your pinky nail. Dudes was looking at getting a life sentence, you know, for that with their enhancements. And the judges was like, nah, this dude, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a user. You know what I mean? I don't feel comfortable sentencing him to life because he don't need life. He needs a program. But the guidelines mandated that he get life, and the judge had no choice but to do it until the Honorable Donald Trump came in and Obama came in and did the, you know, programs that they did as far as, you know, the First Step Act that Donald Trump did and the sentence computation that Obama did. But that's the way it was, so you understand. You had judges back then refusing the sentences, you know, to the mandatory minimum because they felt the time was too excessive. Another word they use is called draconian. Now you have these judges in Brooklyn from everything going on. They get me to speak about how many, you know, bodies dropped and, you know, stabbings and everything that went on um, over the last year up in this joint in this next clip I'm going to play. So just sit back. Enjoy the ride and, you know, let, let, let's make it happen, man. 
Donald Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, spent a harrowing year in federal custody. He says for someone used to a life of luxury like Diddy, prison life is a severe shock. You have a desk, you have a plastic chair, you have your bed with a one and a half inch mattress, no pillow, and you also have a locker. So you basically have three feet by five feet to move around. So you have a basic 15 square feet. It is a horrible, horrible place. All right, so now, you heard what he just said, right? Let me break this, you know I like to ride. You know, I like to ride, that's what I like to do, I like to ride. You know, happy Throwback Thursday. So we're going to do a Throwback Thursday. Now, did he dealing with this? Like he said, they got a plastic this, plastic that. No, I was in ADX. That's probably where they're going to send Diddy, and I'm going to explain to you why, right? When you have profile like that, they know you got the bag, so you're capable of what they call compromising, you know, staff, which is the police, you know what I mean? To get you what you need to get out of there and get you what you need to live comfortable while you're in there. Then they got ADX that they put people like that when the bag is too big. If your bag is too big, you could wind up in ADX for what they call protective custody to lock you away from everyone else, including the police, where you don't come out your cell unless there's three police with you and a sergeant. We have, uh, you know, uh, what were they, a lieutenant. I don't forget. Yeah, we don't have sergeants in the Fed. Sergeants is in the state. You know, the lieutenant and three officers move you. So, you know, they already know if he get on the compound, he's going to be extorted and pressed for the bag. So they're not going to try and send them to a regular compound. Nine times out of ten, when this is all over, if Diddy's convicted, he'll go to ADX. Because if he go to a USP, he has a jacket on him because he has those X, S charges against females, right? So that alone, you're going to have people that's scornful of him. So he's not going to be allowed to go on a regular compound because there's going to be dudes that might want to put that Bethlehem, as Banky Pound says, in him, you know? And there's dudes that might just want to shake him down for the bag. But that's what happens in the prison system. I'm sure it does happen in the state, but we know it happens in the feds. When you get big moguls like this, as soon as Diddy hit the compound, right? They're going to hear about it before he come. Go to police, going to start talking. They're going to make preparations. And as soon as they hit, everybody's going to be praying that they get to get on the compound with Diddy. You know what I mean? They want him in their cell, in their unit, you know, even the trustee when they put him in protective custody. Like right now, he's in Brooklyn in protective custody. I'm going to get into what it's like being in protective custody in Brooklyn in a minute, but let me play the rest of this because we don't need to see his lawyer right now. Diddy's lawyers were so eager to keep him out of jail, they offered his palatial $48 million home in Miami Beach and his private jets as bail. You heard that? $48 million crib and private jets with an S they offered to give him bail and they told him no. That's a good indication that they plan on keeping him in there for the rest of his life. You understand? So they already feel that they got a slam dunk case, they gonna find him guilty, you know, and he's gonna wind up doing time. So they figure there's no need to let him out for a few months while we go through the process. We got the wheels of a uh, 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 railroad, I mean justice, you know, rolling. So he will get the railroading, I mean, justice that he deserve. And, you know, I just want y'all to know that this could happen to any one of you or any one of your celebrity superstar friends that you love, their music, their movies. At any time, they could take it away from you. Diddy shook the tree and went against the grain. Let me give you another ride. <laughs> That, that, that's like one that my man Mo Gary from Baltimore. Big shout out to and round of applause to Mo Gary. Big shout out to Mo Gary from Baltimore. All right, you guys, you guys. I was in ADX Supermax, right, where I anticipate them sending Diddy when this is over. And my man Mo Gary, uh, a.k.a. Harris L. from Baltimore, he gave me a parable where he said that it was a donkey, you know, taking a crap. And it was winter time, and it was a snake under him, and the donkey defecated and defecated on the snake, and it was so much um, feces that the snake got buried under 
the feces and it was so cold, it froze up where it locked them in a cage. Now here comes a man walking by and he rescues that snake. He digs him out with his bare hands. He take him home. He wash him down. He takes the rag and he's, you know, rubbing him from, you know, from the head down to the tail and he's soothing him and he's putting him to sleep and he's feeding him and he's doing everything that this snake needs to be done. And then one night, right? The guy was sitting there, he was brushing the snake, he just fed him, wiped him down, make sure he healthy, gave him the herbs that he needed to be strong. And when he did that, you know, the snake bit him, you know, and with a poisonous venom. So while the man was dying, he looked at the snake and he said, you bit me. After all I've done for you, I rescued you. I dug you out with my bare hands. I nursed you. And now you bite me and poison me and take my life. Why did you do it? And the snake looked at him and said, I'm a snake. What did you expect? That's why I don't like that. You know what I mean? So you understand that parable. You can help somebody all you want, like Young Thug did all that for little Woody down there. And then next thing you know, he's on the stand saying that, man, I only care about me. I don't care about nobody. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Thug allegedly gave me a car to drive when they were trying to kill me and my family and my baby. Gave me a Corvette, but everybody couldn't fit in it. But uh, he gave me money. He did this. He gave me a job. He gave me opportunity. Then why are you telling on him? Because I'm a rat. Bastard. That's what rat masters do. Same thing like with the snake. Let's finish watching this. Today, they are even offering to restrict female visitors to his homes, except for his mother, daughters, and the mothers of his children if he is released. They told the judge the jail he was being sent to is dreadful, dirty, inhuman, and an... Look at that cell. That's how they had me living for 26 years in a cage. I come out of jail after 26 years living in that environment and <clears throat> I don't have any beef with anybody. I'm not mad with anybody. I don't have any issue. I'm not even mad at the rat bastard that took me. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not mad at the judge for the sentence. I'm not mad at the prosecutor for calling me a scumbag and saying I deserve to die in prison. I get a fresh start. <clears throat> Look at those living conditions. And look what I'm doing now. You see what I'm saying? So the moral of the story is God puts you in all types of situations and places that we might not want to be in, don't feel we belong in. But when he do, don't try and fight it. Just fight with the tools that he gave you because that's why he put you there so you can exercise your tools of survival to get out of whatever situation he feels he needs to put you in so that you can grow. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Look at these living conditions. Could you imagine that he living on Star Island? I should have pulled him a picture of Star Island. I might get one before the video is over. Now, from Star Island, to this. Like I said, right? Check it out. You laying down in that old raggedy cell and all night, you know, you got rats running around in that joint. Rats big like the joints you see on the street when you run and say, oh, and you jump when they come across that they had to put those bins outside in New York to try and curb the rats. Well, that's how they're living in this type of environment. And all you hear is them in your cookies and your chips and you know what I mean? And, and now, picture in the morning, right? You get up, and for, bre for breakfast, they give you a, a hard-boiled egg that's frozen, two slices of bread that's also frozen, two butters, if you're lucky, that's frozen, can't even be spread on the on the thing. So you got to put it in, in on top of the heater and hope the heater is hot enough to melt the butter and warm the bread, and then take the egg, uh, 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 put that in the cup, Get a roll of toilet paper. I wish I had a roll of toilet paper. So we make what we call a bong. <laughs> you know what I mean? In prison. You take the roll of toilet paper and you gut the hole in the middle and you pull the paper out. First you put the brown paper out and you make it, you know, where it's just the white paper and you put some baby oil in the middle and then you light it and that makes a flame. And then you take the milk carton and put a string on it and you hold the milk carton. I'm going to do a video on that for sure. And you take the milk carton and you hold it over that bung, which is the toilet paper with the flame. 
and you warm your milk up or you throw out the milk um, or drink the milk because you ain't throwing out nothing in there because they ain't giving you enough of nothing to throw out nothing. So then you might throw, uh, drink the milk and then put water in it and you warm the water up in this milk container over this roll of toilet paper like this so that you could make a hot cup of coffee in the morning. So instead of ringing a bell and calling uh, Farnsworth, you know, even though he ain't got him no more, instead of ringing a bell and calling his servant, y'all bring me some uh, coffee and uh, some croquettes and uh, some eggs, bacon, and, uh, and a fruit salad. Now you're waking up to a hard-boiled egg, two slices of bread, two butters, a milk. Oh, and let's not forget the frozen apple. Yes, they I, they must got a, a deal with an apple farm because they give you a big thing of apples. You know what I mean? They give the jail a big thing of apples and every, every meal for your dessert, <laughs> you get a cold apple. That's so cold you can't even bite it, you know? But this is what's going on so you understand. Diddy is in for a rough ride from Star Island to Brooklyn's Rikers Island. Come on, dog. Let's get this thing popping. Ongoing tragedy. How's your dad doing? How's your dad doing? Family members appeared somber as they arrived at federal court in Manhattan today in another attempt to get out on bail. The judge cited Diddy's history of violent temper and potential intimidation of witnesses as reasons for keeping him behind bars. Diddy's former protege, singer Aubrey O'Day, is celebrating Diddy's downfall today. I feel validated, a win for women all over the world. Combs has pled not guilty. Those were the only words he ordered in court yesterday. All right, so that's what it is. Diddy pled guilty. Those are the only words he uttered in court. Let's show Diddy. This was Diddy on the top of his game, you know, with his hands right. Oh, I'm the man. You know what I mean? Doing good. But now he's sitting there in Rikers Island of Brooklyn and MDC Brooklyn. So, I mean, you can't get no worse than that, man. I mean, it is what it is. Welcome to the, you know, what they call hell on earth. We're going to have to show you that, you know, this, this, is so real, man. This is so real, you wouldn't even Being believe it. Being called. You know, this is so real, you wouldn't even believe it. But that's how we're going to get into it, just so that y'all understand that this is no joke. Life is real. You know, you violate the laws, you get subject to the consequences of the law. Like I said, I don't think they're going to put Diddy in, uh, in a regular USP. Like they did uh, uh, R. Kelly, he definitely, he definitely, because he, he still got the bag. And uh, so he, he's going to go through it. If he do go in the USP, right, if they don't send him to ADX, they're going to send him to Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona is where they have the S offenders, you know, and, you know, dropouts and things like that. So they'll send him over there expecting him to be protected. And he better be nice over there because if, if they punish him and put him on a regular yard and don't think they don't because look what they did to Whitey Bolger. Remember Whitey Bolger? Old man, almost 80 years old, in a wheelchair, couldn't stand up. Told on the Irish mob up there in Boston. And they move him from a dropout yard in Florida to a maximum security federal prison in Hazleton, he, he, he didn't last. He didn't last a couple of hours there. Soon as they opened the door, dude didn't care. He just jumped up and blasted him, and da 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 da, and that was it. You know what I mean? Because that's how vicious it get in there. Do you think that he could survive in one of those environments? Y'all put it in the comments. Do you think that he could survive in one of those environments? Now they denied his bail. They didn't want his forty-eight million. You know what I mean? Dollar Mansion. You know, they didn't want the extra two million he was throwing on, you know, and they definitely, definitely didn't want his private jets with an S, you know. Now you're going to be on the FBOP, you know, Boeing airline, you know, back in, let me get, let me get another ride. Cause you know I like the ride. Let me get another ride. Do you know the first time I went on a federal plane, right, I was handcuffed with a little black box between my wrists and shackled, and they bring me on the plane. When they bring me on the plane, I'm sitting there by the window, and I look out, and I see the wing has duct tape on it. Look, the wing has duct tape on it, right? So now, we get on, 
and we taking off, and I'm thinking, man, I didn't hear nobody give me the, uh, you know, in case of emergency, what to do with your flotation cushion and, you know, save yourself with the mask before you put on anybody else. I'm like, where's all that at? Then we hit a couple of turbines up there and it went, put the, put the, put the, the plane. I'm like, whoa, you know? So I called one of the marshals. That's the stewardess on the plane. I called the marshal over. I said, I said, okay, excuse me. Um, I, 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 I don't know if y'all forgot or if I missed it, but I didn't hear what to happen in the case of emergency and the plane go down. And the marshal looked me dead in the face and he said, uh, what's your name? You know? I said, uh, unique. He said, okay, well, unique. If the plane go down, you go down with the plane. We have parachutes over there that we, the marshals, use to get out, but we leave you on the plane. So I said, you mean if the plane is going down, that, that means that I go down with the plane, no one is there to help me? And he said, no. I said, how would you justify that? He said, you're just a casualty of war. You know the way they tell you on a regular airline to put the, you, you know, an oxygen mask on yourself? Okay, well, they tell us to worry about ourselves and don't worry about you guys. And then they hit another bump. And I looked at him. He grabbed on the rail and he winked at me and he walked over there and he tapped his parachute. Let me know. I got mine, Jacob. He tapped his parachute. While the plane is in an uproar, man. And I said, oh, oh, where they got me at? But now, that's the plane they're going to take Diddy on. And this is going to be a culture shock for him because I didn't have no private jet. But from a private jet that's customized to your liking with the bad boy logos everywhere and the leather stitching and in the, you know, the movie screens and the, you know, the artwork and everything. And now you're on a federal plane that if it go down, they're going to leave you to your own demise. Welcome to the feds. That's why I say don't break the law, youngin. That's why I say it's not worth it. Don't break the law. So don't say I didn't tell you. Don't break the law. Now, where we at? If you subscribed, hit the notification bell. If you not subscribed, hit the notification bell. All right? Let me pull up out of this for a second. I'm going to try and do something because me and Diddy up here. You know, Diddy up here, he about to, you know, uh, go through a rough ride. You know, if I go through a real rough ride, yeah, P A.